Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks, does narcissism cause depression in others? So not depression for the narcissist, but depression for other people around the narcissist. And this question specifically asks about workplace environments. So does a narcissistic leader or manager cause depression in the employees that the narcissist is managing. So I looked at a few different articles to create this video. One I relied on a lot from 2017, but I'll put all the references for the articles I used in the description for this video. Again, this is looking at workplace environments, but it's reasonable to think that at least some of these findings could be generalized to other relationships like romantic relationships. So first I'm going to take a look at the outcome here, which is depression. What is depression? Well, depression is a characteristic we see associated with a few different mental disorders in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, like Major Depressive Disorder and Persistent Depressive Disorder. With depression we see low mood, feelings of worthlessness, fatigue, not experiencing pleasure in activities that normally brought pleasure, and we see a number of other symptoms as well. Now, outside of the emotional pain and all the other suffering associated with depression, we also see an enormous financial cost. So globally, depression costs around $925 billion a year. So it should be of interest to employers for a number of reasons. Now, in a workplace setting, depression can be caused by a number of factors, including poor relationships with management or leaders inside of companies specifically managers who are authoritarian, manipulative, and aggressive. The destructive leadership behavior we see from individuals who have these characteristics is often referred to as workplace bullying. And what we see here with bullying, of course, is it's repeated and persistent negative actions towards someone, which usually involve a power imbalance and create a hostile environment. In a workplace setting, we would say, create a hostile work environment. Now, bullying can take place in an employment environment through a lot of different ways and by a lot of different people. Like, a lot of different people can be involved in the bullying. It doesn't necessarily have to be a manager or leader that conducts the bullying behavior. But we know that leaders and managers are responsible for about 75% of the workplace bullying. So that covers depression and a little bit of the workplace bullying construct. But what about narcissism. Well, in order to look at this in terms of depression and workplace bullying, the constructs that are being studied are actually both narcissism and psychopathy. Because what we see in a lot of this research is it's conducted on the dark traits and also the dark core. And I'll describe both of these concepts. So there are three dark traits. We see narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism conceptualized to be subclinical, meaning these characteristics don't have to occur at a level that would normally require or indicate mental health counseling. So these can be fairly common traits observed in the workplace and in other places. These three dark traits, often called the dark triad, are often just simply reduced to narcissism and psychopathy. And this is because Machiavellianism overlaps so much with these other constructs, especially psychopathy. I view Machiavellianism as similar to psychopathy, but a Machiavellianistic individual has a greater appreciation of consequences and is really smarter in how they try to get ahead, less impulsive and more strategic. But either way, when I say the dark traits here in the context of this video, I'm really just talking about narcissism and psychopathy. So narcissism is characterized by grandiosity, a sense of entitlement, self-centeredness, arrogance, and jealousy. Psychopathy is characterized by being manipulative, having a lack of empathy, being deceitful, impulsive, irresponsible, being sensation-seeking, so always looking for excitement, and criminality, so violating the norms of society, committing crimes. Narcissism and psychopathy are considered to be relatively distinct, but they also have some overlap here as well. For example, we see that with both narcissism and psychopathy, there's low agreeableness, so being disagreeable or antagonistic, and deceitfulness. 
Now, looking at factors that are unique most of the time to one or the other, psychopathy is uniquely associated with impulsivity, like what we would see with low conscientiousness. Narcissism is uniquely associated with attention-seeking, and we would see this with high extroversion. Now, the research tells us that callousness, really a lack of empathy, being manipulative, and being antagonistic, that's that low agreeableness part, these factors account for much of the overlap between narcissism and psychopathy. And these characteristics are referred to as the dark core. So why do so many leaders and managers have dark traits? Well, these positions, leadership positions, tend to be appealing for people with dark traits. Certainly not all leaders have dark traits, of course, but there is a strong association. People with dark traits are attracted to the power, authority, level of control, and status associated with these positions. People without dark traits are attracted to these opportunities for a chance to contribute their talent, to help create jobs, to be in a position where they can encourage people, to help create products or deliver services that help people. So really pro-social reasons. So people with dark traits are attracted for antisocial reasons, and people without dark traits are attracted for pro-social reasons. So what's the behavior of a leader who has high narcissism and high psychopathy? Again, not necessarily high enough to qualify as being related to a mental disorder, like antisocial personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder, but just high relative to the population. Well, we see that managers like this tend to exploit employees. They're aggressive, rude, they brag, and they believe that they are superior. They also fail to create or maintain relationships. They earn a reputation as being bullies. They make poor decisions, and they tend to greatly limit the career success of people who work for them. Now, specific to narcissism, when a leader is narcissistic, we see that they take credit for other people's work. They criticize employees without justification, so they engage in falsely accusing employees of having performance problems or other problems. They exaggerate their own achievements. So really what we see here is they bully to protect an inflated sense of self. That's the driver for this narcissistic leadership type behavior. Now specific to psychopathy, we see that they want to humiliate and harm other people. And it's because of a maliciousness component. So they act impulsively and aggressively. And the lack of empathy they exhibit is a particular concern because empathy would limit how far somebody would take an aggressive behavior. So those limits are really compromised or removed when somebody is psychopathic. So in consideration of all this, back to this question, do the dark traits lead to depression? How does workplace bullying fit into this? So if we look at the findings of this research study I was talking about earlier, we see that the dark traits do influence depression. And workplace bullying is one of the mechanisms through which this happens. So the way we kind of express this is that we have the dark traits on one side, we have depression on the other side, and in between, as a mediator, we have workplace bullying. So workplace bullying really explains how the dark traits are converted into feelings of depression on the part of employees. This study found that leader narcissism and psychopathy is destructive and detrimental to employees' mental health. This isn't really surprising. Other studies had the same finding. Now, what may be a little bit more surprising here is that psychopathy was found to be the largest predictor of bullying in the workplace. And with narcissism, there was a bit of a different result. Narcissism did predict workplace bullying and indirectly depression. But when psychopathy was added into the analysis, it was added into the model, we see that narcissism didn't add that much in terms of effect. So this is a bit surprising because we would think that narcissistic leaders and psychopathic leaders would cause depression in employees. Well, the theory here is that the dark core is really what matters. So I mentioned before that would be manipulation, callousness, and antagonism, low agreeableness. When psychopathy and narcissism appear together, the dark core can really be at its strongest. So again, we're really looking at the dark core as the primary driver, what seems to lead to the depression. So does that mean that narcissism doesn't lead to depression in work environments? Well, actually, narcissism probably does lead to depression. 
and research has already established it leads to a lot of other bad outcomes at work. But again, just looking at depression, the tricky part about narcissism is it's characterized by a lot of negative factors, but it's also characterized by high extroversion. And extroversion can have a positive effect on employees. So what happens is the positive effect gets weighed against the negative effect, so it tends to look neutral. The presence of a positive effect doesn't mean there's no negative effect. And we see the same thing in personality theory. A person can have both positive emotions, like with what we see with high extroversion, and negative emotions, which is measured on neuroticism. So somebody can have both of those. They can tend to experience positive emotions and tend to experience negative emotions. Having one doesn't mean that they won't have the other. So one way you can look at this is with a psychopathic leader, there are pretty much only bad results, bullying, depression, and other problems. With a narcissistic leader, there are some good results, but mostly bad results. The positive effect only occurs when the negative effect is observable. So you don't get the positive results occurring by themselves. There's always that negative piece attached to narcissistic leadership. Now when you put narcissism and psychopathy together, you're back to primarily bad results because you have the psychopathic component again, and the few potential positive elements of narcissism are overwhelmed by the effects of psychopathy. So kind of taking a step back and looking at all these findings, what does all this mean? Well, sometimes when people talk about narcissistic and psychopathic leaders and managers, it's framed with words like this, inconvenient, uncomfortable, unfortunate, or less than ideal, but not described as deleterious, detrimental, and having a negative effect on somebody's mental health, but rather just like it's part of a fairly normal work experience. Some employees go to work and they don't have to deal with a lot of narcissism, and other employees go to work and they do. And the same thing with psychopathy. Some employees have to deal with it and others don't. It's just kind of random and we really shouldn't worry about that much. That's kind of how it's framed. But the research tells us something totally different. The research says that narcissism and psychopathy are much more dangerous than that. They're beyond simply inconvenient. The dark traits, the dark triad, including the dark core, even at subclinical levels, levels that again would not indicate treatment, are extremely destructive. They lead to depression, they cause a great deal of pain and suffering in other ways, they create lost productivity, and they result in a significant financial loss for companies that continue to have narcissistic leaders and managers. So the bottom line is when companies allow, encourage, promote, reward, or even simply fail to stop destructive leaders, everyone loses, except, of course, ironically, those destructive leaders. They're the ones that come out ahead. And I think a lot of this happens because so many people fail to understand narcissism and psychopathy. They see the different traits, but they don't put it together. They don't realize we have a name for it. And it's been well studied and documented in the research literature. And I think the other part that kind of interferes is People look at interpersonal dynamics, relationships, as very hard to understand in general. And when you take into account all the extra dynamics of the workplace, like trying to achieve a goal and work schedules and all the people together at the same time engaging different activities, it just makes it even more complex. So again, there's this tendency just to say, let's not worry about it. People act differently. Nobody's really acting in a way that's hurting anybody so we'll just leave it alone. But that's not really a wise strategy for companies. Another difficulty here, of course, is when narcissistic leaders and psychopathic leaders get into positions of power, especially the very high positions of power, they sometimes select other narcissistic and psychopathic leaders. So they are the ones making the decisions about who is in the management and leadership positions in a company. So once that happens, Really, I think that company, in that situation anyway, has a lot of struggles, right? If the very top people in the organization are the same narcissistic and psychopathic leaders that these studies are really talking about, it's hard to see where those companies would have a lot of hope for improving the work environment, for decreasing workplace bullying, and subsequently decreasing depression in employees. So I know whenever I talk about these constructs like narcissism and psychopathy, the dark traits, and depression and these other constructs, 
there'll be a variety of opinions, people who've had experience with these different situations in the workplace and in other places, and those who agree and disagree with how I framed the answer to this question. Please put your opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of narcissism, psychopathy, and depression to be interesting. Thanks for watching.